Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. Episode 71. That's pretty exciting, right? Uh, so last time we we did an FPS test and we added text to our game, which is super exciting. We can finally track stuff on our, our screen here and we spend money, we lose money, and we actually uh, destroy an enemy. We should gain the cash back up here. Yep, great. Uh, this episode we're going to build on both of those previous ones, the one where we did the FPS test and the one where we added text. Um, we're gonna be doing a slight optimization here. Uh, well, I shouldn't say slight, it's actually a pretty decent upgrade. Um, <laughs> kind of a blunder on my part uh, on some lines of code that we have here. Easy fix to increase performance for those of you that have been having issues with the performance. Uh, by the way, I wanna say thank you to everyone that filled out that survey on the last episode. Uh, a lot of good data there. I found out that the average RAM of an indie programmer viewer is 7.55555555556 gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty cool, huh? Uh, lots of people with eight gigs. That's obviously the most common one. Uh, lots of people with four, and then you know some outliers: 12, 16, two. Um, but there didn't appear to be a huge correlation between uh, RAM or performance, which I wasn't really surprised with because we're not really using the RAM a lot for our game. Um, but there are a couple easy fixes or improvements that we can make to our game to make it better performance wise. So it's pretty much just one simple change in both of our game class and our editor class. So go ahead and open those up here. And some of you may have already noticed this before. In fact, one person definitely did and they pointed it out to me, which I'm very thankful for, Theodore on Patreon. Maybe I should have asked if I could use his name or not, but anyways, thank you for helping me out here. Uh, what we're doing here, and you know, I don't need to go into the whole spiel again, but you guys already uh, should know by now that we're not coding everything perfectly the first time around. I'm kind of doing this series in a way where we can just get something done every episode, even if it's not perfect, and then we can go back to it and kind of uh, iteratively improve it, right? So sometimes I'll write code that's not perfectly optimized, you know, big surprise there. Uh, with the intent of going back. This one, however, is a little bit, uh, uh, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for. Uh, basically, we should change this one now instead of later because it can make such a big difference in such an easy way, uh, and that is right here. Uh, right here, we're drawing the menu background for our editor. It's the little thing, it's the reason we have a black box right over here, which by the way, I'm going to uh, extend this texture maybe next time and just put that for free for, for everyone. Uh, but we have the menu over here and then also the editor. We have the editor menu over there. So when we added those, we are drawing the texture and the draw method, which is fine. However, every time we call draw quad text, we're actually using quick load to load a texture uh, into memory. And we're never actually releasing that memory for other things. So what I would do is I would, uh, I should have maybe done this before I started recording. If you control alt delete, if you're on windows and uh, you go to the, the memory tab, uh, if it's the same for Windows 7 and other stuff, I'm on Windows 7. If you run the game in, your, in either the editor or the play mode, you can actually see the free memory drop down like very steadily, just in a steady decline with this line right here, because we're allocating more and more memory to save this texture, even though we only need it one time. Okay, so very easy fix there. We're just going to make a variable to hold that texture, and then we're going to draw that uh, variable. So instead of saying like every single time, hey, Computer, I want you to draw this image. It looks just like this, and this is how big it is. Uh, we're just gonna say, here's all the stats for the image, and then every time we update, just be like, draw that thing. Okay? So, uh, pri whoops. private texture menu background is what I will call mine. Import that from the uh, slick util, or slick. Uh, and we're gonna set it up right in the constructor here. This time in your background equals quick load. Um, up, 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 the texture name. And instead of draw quad text, we can just draw the menu background. What is wrong? Oh, right. And then we need the X and the Y. Oops. So just erase this right here. And put menu background. Cool. Uh, and then go back up here. Hopefully you copied that paste the string, and we should be all good. So let's go ahead and run, we have an error. Uh, draw quad text menu, there we go. All right, let's run that and just see if it works. 
I don't know why it wouldn't. Editor. All right, the game didn't crash, so it worked. Okay, that's all I'm going for here. And if you check your control delete, you should see a uh, major improvement from what it was before. If you look in the uh, the memory usage. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do the same thing over in the game class now. The game class, we have menu background two. That's what mine is called. Copy that. Go up to the top. Uh, make a new texture. Private texture. Menu, background, import, set it up in the constructor, this, you don't really need to use this, but I will, equals quick load, there we go, and then down here we're going to draw menu, background. Okay, great. Uh, so I know in the video it doesn't look any different at all, uh, but those of you that were having issues, I'd be interested to know if this actually helps you, uh, because that was definitely making a, uh, it was a huge drain on our, our memory. So if you were having issues, I'd be very, very surprised if that did not in some way affect your issues. And thanks again uh, to the guy that helped us out with that on Patreon. Uh, so I got uh, some notes down here. Find textures. Okay, okay. So what we're going to do, uh, because so far the game doesn't really look any different, and I always try to make it a goal that every video of the game looks a little bit different, so we feel like we're making progress, right? Even though we're doing some behind-the-scenes progress, we want to see something different. So after we've done that little quick pseudo-optimization, writing things the correct way, uh, we're going to also draw the wave number on the screen. So last time we drew the cache and the lives, and uh, I was playing around with our game, and something else I realized was missing was the wave number. So that is pretty easy. Game UI dot draw string. And I actually have some values written down here from when I was testing this out. Uh, so if you want to make it look like how I have mine, then you can copy these values down. If you have your own kind of setup, then don't worry about copying them. I don't think it's going to uh, be an issue if yours is different. So for wave, I have it at a 1340x, uh, a y of 600, and the text, I'll just say wave put a space in there plus and we don't actually have a getter yet for the wave number of our wave manager we can call wave manager but we only can get the current wave which is like an object that holds our enemies uh, instead we want to get the wave number we already have the variable here so the very bottom of the wave manager class just make a new getter public int get wave number return Wave number. All right, easy enough. Game class, wave manager dot get wave number. And uh, also I moved these values around a little bit too. The lives is at 1320 and a Y of 700. And cash is at 1320 and a Y of 800. And again, that's just if you want it to look like what I have, uh, feel free to change those values around. So it's gonna run that, and let's see how it looks. Okay, I uh, got wave one. I might actually wanna move these closer together, but I'll do it off screen. I don't need to waste your time with that. Wave one, and we're gonna see if it works here. We're gonna let these enemies get to the edge of the screen, and when they go off the edge, it should hopefully go to wave two. So in the meantime, I'll just make a little tower island over here. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Oh, missed. Okay, lives go down, good. Wave two, cool, and now we're on the second wave. Perfect. And one last thing I want to do in this episode is, what else do I want to do this episode? Oh, draw FPS. So currently we're tracking it in the console right here. And also we're tracking it way too often. And this is just a simple, I'm not going to say it's a mistake because it doesn't really affect us either way, but it would be better if we change the way that it's reported currently. So in the state manager class, uh, first off I'm printing it right here, which is every time the game updates. You don't really need to do that. We could just print it right here, uh, which is every second. Remember, if current time is greater than next second. So once a second, it'll report it instead of like a million times a second. Uh, and it just makes it look cleaner. So 58, 60, it goes up because I moved the, the window. It started kind of kind of low there. All right. Uh, but I'm actually going to delete that line. So haha, -ha, that was kind of a fake out uh, uh, fix there. Because I'm going to draw the FPS onto the screen. Now, ultimately, I don't know if I mentioned this before or not. My goal is to have a kind of diagnostic mode 
uh, where when we're in the game, we can press like a key, like backslash, and it'll show all these stats to us, like how much memory we're using, uh, our FPS, you know, all that kind of stuff that the player might not want to know, but we might want to know while we're making our game. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to draw the FPS onto the screen for everyone to see. Okay. And that is going to be also in the game class here. I'm going to game UI dot draw string. You can put it zero, zero in the top left corner. And we are going to get our state manager dot frames in last seconds. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What's up? What's up? Int int string is not applicable for int int int. Right, of course. Uh, plus FPS. All right. Now let's try that out and see if that works. I don't know why it wouldn't. Uh, okay, cool. So now we can see our FPS live in the game. So you'll know if you're having performance issues that having to check the console and it keeps our console kind of free from spam of stuff we don't actually care about. So that's great. Uh, we got our waves tracking now, got our FPS tracking now. Again, mine might dip down because I'm recording. Uh, yours hopefully shouldn't with those changes we made. And uh, things are looking pretty cool. Now for next episode, uh, what I want to do is add some text options. Uh, so remember we mentioned that we added the ability to draw text. Right now it's kind of default and looking you know, pretty bland. Uh, I'd like to be able to pass in uh, you know, stuff like colors and font types and size. Because ultimately right now, remember when I said earlier in this video that we kind of do things fast and loose the first time and go back and improve them kind of iteratively? iteratively. Uh, these are just static textures. Play, editor, quit. Eventually I'd like to just make the buttons where in our UI we can go, you know, button B equals new button and we could pass in text. So we could just, you know, dynamically update the text in these buttons instead of like differently sized words, you know. Uh, that goes back into having bitmap text, which is in the future. So the text that we draw won't look like this with the gradients and nice and pretty. Good job, Brian, Photoshop. Um, but it'll be better because it'll be dynamically drawn. So there you go. That's going to be next episode. Uh, make sure to check out IndieProgrammer.com uh, for, I don't know, whatever. I'm just, I'm writing stuff there, writing some text tutorials. Oh, check out the Java FX series that just started. So that's going to be going concurrently with this one. Uh, this one's not stopping. Uh, but that one is also how to make desktop applications. So not like a video game per se, stuff like Eclipse or, you know, a calculator app, stuff that is just like an application on a desktop. It works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So fun stuff over there. And make sure to check out IndieProgrammer.com slash Patreon if you want to support the series. Thanks a lot. And I will see you all next time.